What's up guys? So, right after the last video, I'm still kind of winded. It's getting hot in my room. And yeah, this one should be a little bit easier because there's only one champion from each of the other regions. So we're going to be going over all the other uh, cards. Um, a lot of these I think have already been shown. Um, yeah, I think at least, at least just from looking at Demacia, a lot of these have been shown. So this is going to be the first time I'm seeing some of these cards, but obviously anything that was already previously revealed, I've seen. So let's look at this. Uh, there, so there, we've got Quinn. Um, when I'm summoned, uh, so Quinn is like the whole scout mechanic thing. When I'm summoned, summon Valor, uh, and level up when I've seen you attack four times. I'm going to level up to MF, actually, which would lead me to question, do you want to put Quinn and MF in the same deck? Uh, the answer is probably no. But, uh, interesting that they have the same level of condition. Um... And then Valor is a two, it's a better, it's a Fleet Feather Tracker with Scout. Uh, so Quint, in theory, is a 5-5-5, five, 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 just split into two bodies. Uh, she also, Blinding Assault is her special spell. Um, it's not good, not good, don't, 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 don't put this in your deck, unless you want, like, a spell deck. Like, just, just, just don't. Please don't, please, please don't do that. Unless you're running a, a spell deck and you want other spells to summon units, don't don't put this card in the deck. Um, so uh, we've got Concerted Strike. Use an enemy. Two allies strike it. So this is kind of like this is kind of like whirling axes or um. The the one the one uh the one craving uh, uh yeah whirl, whirling death whirling death my bad it's like whirling death but you get two allies and it doesn't have to be in combat is this good uh probably this is probably good uh I don't think you want to run three of these but I think it's good. Genevive Elmhart. I probably Genevi. I I'm, I'm mispronouncing this. Elmhart. Uh, Scout plus Challenger. When I'm summoned, give other allies plus one plus one this round. Ah, uh, since you're a Scout unit, you get to attack twice. Um. In. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this card. I want to say that she's good, but only if you're running a scout heavy deck. Got a scout heavy deck. This feels bad. Uh, Greenthorn Companion. We've already seen this. Uh, five four five scout card. I don't really like that. Um, but in the scout heavy deck, this card I really like. Uh. Green Fang Warden, uh, three two two with Barrier and Scout. This card is amazing. Like, oh my God, you you are so good. Uh, you get Barrier, so the enemy can't block you at all, and you have Scout, so you get to attack twice. At the end, for the enemy to take this out, they have to commit a spell, um, or or they just had to accept the fact that they're taking four damage or they're taking two. In theory. They could, if they have like a really strong, a really healthy blocker, they could um, block with that and then break the barrier with that. Um, but you're still like, going to end up doing two damage to it. Grizzled Ranger, this card is broken. This card is broken. It is broken. Summon a loyal Badger Bear. And it gets Scout. The loyal Badger Bear is a 3 4 4. Uh, what? You're essentially paying four mana to get a total of eight health and th or eight attack and five health between two bodies at different times. And Grizzled Ranger has Scout. Like, what is this? This card is insane. This card is insane. Like, on on honestly, like every Demacia deck, run this card. Seriously. 
Rangers resolve. Give allies tough this round. A bad card. Don't use. Unyielding spirit. Grant an ally. I can't take damage or die. This card is broken. <laughs> I say that. Okay, this card is really strong. Because it does not say follower, it says ally, so you can grant this to champions. I can't take damage or die. Vengeance no longer works on me. Oh, you're using vengeance on my card, I see. Hmm, unyielding spirit. You don't do anything now. What? What? Like, oh my, this... This... Card is insane. It costs eight mana. Yes, but it makes scouts super good. This card is so good. On run this and just like everything, like on every every Demacia deck should probably run this. Um, like just imagine this card on Garen. Imagine this card on Garen. Right, like. I play Garen, I put this on Garen, he now can't die anymore. The, like, because at that point, the only way to counter the, the only way to counter my creature is to uh, Will of Ionia. That is the only counter to this card is Will of Ionia. Or if you're using this card on a follower, someone can purify it. Um, but yeah, the, like the only counter is Will of Ionia. Um, I don't know if that if I don't know if this effect means that uh I'd like what happens if you use this card on someone and you try to like chronicler of ruin it. Um what happens, you know? But this uh, ooh. Ooh, this is ooh. That's an insane card. That is an insane card. That's 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 going to be wicked. Okay. Demacia down. On to Freljord. Ah, some horror cards. So let's start with Sejuani. Uh, a 6-5-6. Six, six, good stats. With Overwhelm. Give an enemy Frostbite and Vulnerable this round. Uh, pretty good. When you've damaged the enemy Nexus in five different rounds this game, I level. And when she levels, grant in, uh, the first time I see you damage the enemy Nexus each round, Frostbite all enemies. So essentially, you want to run Sejuani with something that can deal damage to the Nexus very easily. So running this with Bilgewater cards could be because there's a lot of, or running this with anything that has a skill effect that activates before your attack goes off is really useful because then uh, her effect will activate and frostbite all enemies. So, like, you could run this with Noxit, like, essentially, like, essentially, if you have leveled up Sejuani and you attack with her and, um, like, Boom Crew Rookie, Boom Crew's Rookie's effect will activate, uh, first, uh, hit the enemy Nexus, and then all the enemies are Frostbitten. That's insane. Uh, you could try to pair this with Ash, but it would be very difficult to do so, uh, making it so that the enemies can't block. Doesn't really matter, I think, because a lot of Freljord cards are kind of tanky already. Okay. So, that's Sejuani. Uh, and then her special spell is Fury of the North. Grant, give an ally plus four, plus four this round. Uh, man. I mean, I guess you could run it. It's kind of like just a beefed up version of uh, Elixir of Iron. Or it's like a single target stand or a single target uh, back to back instead of it targeting two, you target one type of thing. I, I, I could see it. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see people using that. Aurora Boreolis. <laughs> instead of Aurora Boreolis, it's Aurora Boreolis. Create two random Poros from any region and two Poro snap. Who? The problem with this card is that it costs seven. More poorer support is great, but it cost seven. 
and it's create, meaning they go into your hand. You don't play those Tauros. Um, in theory, it can give you uh, the part of the fluff Poro thing, um, which you don't want. Uh, well, you might. It depends on what, you, what, what your hand is looking like. Two Poros two poor Snacks is good. Getting two Poros Snacks is really good because uh, they did buff that where it now costs only three. So the prob the problem with this card is that it costs seven, so it's it's just not worth it. Like it's it's so like the, the part of the problem is if this card costs any less, it might be too overpowered. It might make Poros too strong. Maybe because you get two Poros snacks out of it. it it's just it, this card costs too much. Poros Poros just gonna struggle so much. Okay, call in the cold. Give an enemy unit frostbite and vulnerable this round. A slow card. This just probably isn't that good. Yeah, I don't I don't see this being useful unless you really want to give it vulnerable. Eh, I don't know. That's, uh, it, that that technically is a toss up, but I don't see that being useful. But some of some of these stuff depend on the meta because you can like give a enemy champion that you want to kill this. Like like the in Frogger, there's not a lot. There's not like a. There's not a lot of interaction. So giving something vulnerability might be your way of getting interaction. Uh, shared spoils. Grant the top three units of your deck plus one plus one. Plunder. Draw one of them. Okay. Okay. Seeing some Bilgewater Frogger synergy coming on. Uh, Ursine Spiritwalker, Plunder, I transform into Stormclaw Ursine. Then that is this one. Other allies of 5 plus power have Overwhelm. I mean, yeah, this is a good card. Obviously. You need a Plunder, though. Uh, Wolf Rider, Plunder, gain an empty mana gem. Kind of for late game control decks I guess but you uh, doesn't really fit that mold though so I guess it can kind of work in the Sejuani plunder deck it lets you get Sejuani faster I can see it being useful I can see it being useful um uh, you want to run this though maybe not like because by the time you're playing it, it's your fourth turn. Like, let's assume you play it on turn four. Then on your next turn, you'll have six mana. Maybe. 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 The Tusk Raider. Uh, so this is the one that gets Sejuani. Double the power of uh, health of all allies in your deck. Alright, so this card is actually ridiculously strong. Um, granted, it is a late game card. So, essentially, like, a lot of this stuff is going to make it so that you don't want to go late game against a lot of the new decks that might be coming. You don't want to hit. If the, if the opponent is running one of these types of cards, oh boy, you do not want to hit late game. I'm surprised Demacia doesn't have one of these. Okay, on to Ionia. We've got a lot of cards, actually. So we've got Lee Sin. When you cast a spell, give me Challenger this round. If you cast another, give me Barrier. When you've cast seven spells this game. Um, interesting. Like, so, okay, so I know that I've seen Lee Sin before, obviously. I feel like he's going to be a very difficult champion to play. You don't, he does not have to see you cast the spells, which is good. And he is an Ionia, which um, is, in my opinion, a very strong region. Um, but Ionia doesn't have a ton of spells, so let's see what else we've got. Also, uh, his level up thing, um, I Dragon Rage enemies that I challenge. Uh, Dragon Rage being, um, yeah, an ally, like you, so you, 
An ally kicks an enemy into their nexus, striking both. If the enemy survives, you recall it. So essentially, these things kicking people into the nexus. Um. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. Okay. So claws of the dragon. Summon me from hand once you've played two spells this round. Uh, might be useful. We'll see. The card itself is useful in the fact that it's a two three two. The stats aren't bad. But I mean, two health. Yeah. Gust of Palm, send an enemy to summon a Tail of the Dragon. Which, when I'm recalled, transform me into a Concussive Palm. Okay, and that uh, works with Retreat. Recall an ally to create a Fleeting Return in hand. Wait, okay, so essentially Concussive Palm is I stun a card and I summon this 3-3-2. Um, and then I can retreat, recall an ally to create a fleeting retreat in hand. You can, uh, recall this. I can see this working with, like, there's some, there is some more, like, Yasuo support in here. Technically, there's some more, like, recall options that you have. Um, but, I mean, overall, you're not gonna, um, also, like, doesn't really, uh, there's Sonic Wave, what's the, oh, at least in special thing is Dragon King. Uh, oh, yeah, and then Return is, um... First spells resolve instantly. The enemy can't act before... Uh, I don't know why I'm reading that. Summon an ally that costs three or less from hand. Um, right, so you can... I guess you wouldn't be recalling this thing. Um, you could recall scales... Okay, scales of dragon. When I summon create a dragon's protection in hand, it... Um, grant an ally plus zero plus three token card. Can't actually deck this. Only get this from Scales of the Dragon. So you play Scales of the Dragon, then you can repeat Scales of the Dragon, and then replay Scales of the Dragon to get two Dragon Protection. Problem with this card is it's a slow card. Um, like it helps work towards Lee Sin's condition level up condition. And I don't know. Uh, Eye of the Dragon. A tune. Okay, interesting. Round start. Summon a Dragon Link if you cast two plus spells last round. Dragon Link. I mean, for a free card, it's you're not going to obviously want to run this as an actual card. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, if you can definitely, if you can make this spell deck work, Sonic Wave is an ally challenger this round. Create a fleeting resonant strike in hand, which is a uh, given ally plus two plus. Two. Um, which there's a lot of there's a lot of like uh retreat and return. That's two spells. So Eye of the Dragon, could, that's easy two spells. Sonic Wave resonating strike two spells. And they made Eye of a Dragon an epic card. So clearly they thought this card was really good. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Deep Meditation. Cost two less if you cast two plus spells last round. Draw two other spells. That's good. It keeps the keeps your uh, train going. Keeps keeps the engine going. Horns of the Dragon. Double attack. This is one of the first like double attack right now uh is unique to Senna and Lucian. So this is one of the, like, first other cards that gets this. Interesting. Because it means that, like, Sonic Wave and Resonating Strike is a lot more full on Horns of the Dragon. In theory, like, Dragon's Protection is more. Well, this is definitely going to be, like, the least in deck is definitely going to be something that you want to run, um... 100%. You're going to definitely want to run all of your, like, utility Ionia cards in it. Um, building, a, building a deck for Lee Sin is going to be rough. It is going to be rough. Uh, I guess PMZ would be the best thing because they have the best spells. Um, the Mushroom cards are obviously 
So we'll see what happens. Okay. So Swain. Um Deal three damage, so Nexus Strike deals three damage to the enemy. He's a five three six, so fearsome. Deals three damage to the enemy Nexus. When you've done twelve non combat damage this game, I level up. Doing twelve non combat damage is actually gonna be super easy to do. Trust me when I say that. There's so many things in this game that deal non combat damage that leveling up Swain is going to be very, very So when we deal non combat damage to the enemy Nexus, stun the strongest back row enemy. Next strike deal three damage to all enemies. So your goal with Swain um, is to level him up uh, and then like do not keep doing non-combat damage. Stun enemies um, and yeah, uh, just hit the Nexus so that way you deal three damage to all enemies. Making Swain hit the Nexus is going to be hard. Leveling him up is going to be easy. Um, Also, his own uh, his own uh, ability helps him proc his path. So let's look at the spell card. Uh, Ravenous flock deal four damage to a unit if it's damaged or stunned. Uh, I mean, damaging a unit is gonna be easy. Uh, stunning a unit not as stunning a unit is hard to do. Um, this is a fast card though, so that's useful. Um, I think depending upon what your deck is, this is really useful. Armored Tusk Rider. I only take damage from enemy units of 5 plus power. Ooh, new effect. The 665 only can be damaged from power. That's really good. You're, if you're, 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 if this is saying, if you don't have a card that can actually one-shot me, you don't deal damage to me. And I have Overwhelm, so you can't just chump block me. That is a really good card. That is a really good card. Oh my god. Auric Glithorn. Attack. Stun all damage units, or all damage enemies. That's really good. Oh, I don't think, uh, by the way, I didn't go over some of the further records, and that's my bad. Uh, Ember made them uh, deal one damage to everything at start around. Uh, and the reason I forgot about these is because, or the reason I'm going over them now is because I remembered. And then Ruthless Raider works with, uh, sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ember Maiden kind of works well with this card. Ember Maiden works well with Vladimir in general anyways. Uh, let's see. Black Powder Grenade. Deal 1 damage. Deal 1 to an ally unit to deal 2 to the enemy Nexus. So, my question is. Dealing damage to enemy... Dealing damage to ally units. Does that count as non-combat damage you have dealt? Because technically, you're dealing a damage yourself. But it is dealing a damage. So does this card... Oh, this is a skill. Whoops. Uh, so I guess we'll get to it in a second. Second, where is this card coming from? I'll have to see where that card's coming from. Um, that's a skill, though. That's interesting. Okay, City Breaker. Deal one damage to the enemy nexus at round start. This card I don't think is that good. Uh, it costs four, which is the only problem with it. If it costs three, I would be saying that this is an amazing card, but since it costs four, eh. Okay. Death's Hand. Deal 2 damage to an enemy unit and 1 to their nexus. Great card. Good card to add with Swain. It's a fast card as well. Amazing. Imperial Demolitionist. Deal 1 damage. Oh, that's what this is. Uh, deal 1 damage to an enemy unit to deal 2 damage to enemy... To, yeah. 1 to your ally, 2 to the nexus. This card works really well with uh, the Aristocrat card. Uh, so this card will be really good for game decks. Uh, Iron Ballista. Uh, that's an Overwhelm card. With three health. Maybe if you're just trying to run like this heavy overwhelm strategy, maybe. Uh, aside from that, I don't think you want to. I think there are better three drops that you could probably run. Uh, and then there's the Leviathan. Uh, 
Play, draw a swain. Round start, deal one damage to the enemy nexus three. It's interesting. Um like all of these things are interesting. The end all problem is that they cost a lot. Um That's the end all problem with all of these. Their effects are great, but they cost a lot. So it's very late game. If you're going up against a deck that is that wants to, if you're going up against like a control deck that wants to hit late game already, ooh, that could be problematic. Okay, Piltover. Uh, we've got Vi for the champion Piltover. When I, sh uh, nope, that's not her. Okay. Uh, while I'm in hand or in play, grant me plus one plus zero for uh when you play another card. He kind of synergizes with draw power, um, and when I strike for 10 or more, I level. Um, and then she becomes a 5, 10, 6. Uh, and when I strike a unit while attacking, uh, I deal 5 damage to the enemy next. And she has challenger and tough. So she kind of synergizes with draw power. Uh, I think, in theory, she could synergize with uh, Jinx, uh, as the Jinx deck likes to go through cards quite fast. Um, but uh, yeah, finding a home for her might be a little troublesome. Um, but yeah, let's look at the other cards. Thief, Mechanist, Devi. When you draw a card, give it fleeting and create a copy of it. So you get two cards. Uh, that definitely helps with the buy strategy uh, for playing cards. Um problem with this card is that every card that you now draw is fleeting which is scary uh this does make um any 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 time that you can re any card that reduces its loss uh from you drawing it is really good with this card and any card uh like um counterfeit copies is really good with this um could also say that um I, I say so the reason why I say counterfeit copies is really good with this is because if there's a card that you want a lot of, you counterfeit copies it, um, and if it's like a cheap card, then great, you get a lot of them. Um so yeah, I think in certain decks this card is great, otherwise this card is trash. Got you, uh when drawn costs two less this round, deal three damage to the It's a good card. For any time that you draw it outside of drawing it, though, it's like, eh. But yeah, so it's a good card. It synergizes as well with the insightful investigator. When you play a two cost card, draw one fleeting. Um, yeah, yeah, just like this is all like draw power, like all centralized, centralized around drawing cards and playing cards. Um, Patrol Wardens. Uh, when I'm drawn, I cost one less this round. This is a good card. Uh, this, once again, draw synergy. Draw synergy, draw synergy. The one the one good thing I will say about Chief Mechanist is Evie as well is that you do get two cards. They are the same card, but you get two cards. Um, but once again, you it's fleet. The Percible. Okay, it's supposed to be for the cat thing. When I'm summoned, draw one. Then if you've played at least 10 other cards of different names, give me plus four plus zero. More uh, support for the uh, perfect per pursuit of perfection card. It requires you to play 20 different cards. This is like your midway point. Um, I think it's good. I really think it's good. And with there being a lot more draw synergy cards in the game, I think it makes these type of cards better because it allows you to go through your deck faster so you can play your other cards a lot more easier and you can run just a lot of low cost cards so that way you can have a bunch of sub -percibles and Pursuit of Perfection cards that you're really playing towards. So I think it definitely makes, uh, I, I definitely think Pursuit of Perfection is definitely going to be a viable strategy here. Uh, suit up. Uh, when drawn, cost two less this round. Set an ally to four four. It's an interesting card. 
I mean, it works great if you have like a weaker ally. Uh, I don't see this being that useful though. Uh, we'll see. Uh, trial evidence. Create a random two cost card in hand. It costs zero this round. Okay, yeah, this is good. I like this card. Um, it works once again. Any any random effect card works well with Pursuit of Perfection. Works well with the Percival. Yeah, that. Oh boy, that's such a great card. For certain decks. Uh, Vault Breaker. This is also a Vi special thing. Uh, give an ally plus two plus zero this round. Also creating fleeting Vault Breaker in hand. Um. Yeah, uh, this is okay. It helps you work towards Vi's level condition, or it helps you end the game. Um, I don't like this though. Uh, I really don't. I really don't feel like I'm ever gonna use this unless I have like a strategy built around Vault Breaker. Veteran Investigator, good stat line. When I'm summoned, all players draw one card. Great card can be used in several different decks. So yeah, uh, a lot of the stuff in this is actually more useful for other things aside from Vi, to be honest. So yeah. And on to Shadow Isles. This is the Maokai uh, whole thing, which uh, Maokai in theory can work well with Nautilus. I would not ever recommend that you play Nautilus and Maokai in the same deck because that is Asking for trouble. That is asking for a lot of trouble. If you... uh, but, uh, I mean, technically, someone might find a deck. But I would not recommend it. Uh, just just too much late game. Uh, okay, Maokai. The first time you play another ally each round, toss two and summon a sapling. When your units have died or your cards have been tossed 25 times this game, I level. Uh, and when I level, I obliterate the opponent's deck and leave only four non-champions in there. And round start, I create a sapling. So the sapling is this uh, little one-to-one -one guy with ephemeral challenger. So essentially, whenever Maokai sees a... Whenever you play another ally, Maokai is going to toss two. You're going to summon a sapling, and that sapling will die. Uh, so essentially, Maokai's level up condition will go up by three every time you play an ally. For the first time each round. That's pretty good. Uh, and the Maokai's uh, special thing, Sap Magic, uh, which, uh, yeah, you can deck that as well, which deck all the... Uh, toss three, heal allies. Three, shuffle, uh, oh, no, shuffle Maokai. Toss three. Heal allies three. I don't think that's good. Uh, maybe, but probably not. There's a lot of, uh, toss energy between Maokai and, like, between all of the new cards for uh shadow isles and all the new cards for bilgewater have tossed energy so i mean if you're playing a nautilus deck you probably want to go into shadow isles especially shadow isles makes it so that you can stall a lot easier if you're playing maokai deck you probably want to go into bilgewater or the other stuff but i probably if you're assuming you're trying to build a deck centered around i don't think you want to use Nautilus as Nautilus and Maokai in the same deck. I think it's just it's trying to do too much of one thing. And you just end up going heavy into Unless there's not a good champion card to play. There that could be a possibility. But eh, we'll see. Okay. Spark Beast. Uh, the first time an ally dies, grant me plus two, plus two. Yeah, you're probably going to run this as a three-up in a Maokai deck. Uh, Blighted Caretaker. Play. Kill an ally to summon two saplings. That's a great card. Works towards Maokai's level up condition. That's an extra three on Maokai's level up condition just from that card alone. Uh, when I'm summoned, toss three. That also gives life steal. Great card. Or anything that wants toss. It's also, I mean, it's got lifesteal as well, so it's a card in that sense. Uh, Neverglade Collector. Never another ally dies, drain one from the enemy nexus. It's a way of stalling out. 
in working with uh kind of like another card that works with everything but not something that you have to feel like you have to run especially because it costs five which is uh, i mean if you, okay if you have maokai out and then you play this maokai will summon sapling and your sapling will die and your uh collector guy gives you an extra health it doesn't have a lot of health you got four hp I just he, he just seems bad. His, his his stats make him seem bad. Um the only the one good part about him is that he drains one from the enemy nexus. So, you so instead of running this in the Malka deck, run this with prankster. Um because th then you're dealing um damage to the enemy nexus like prankster would. And giving yourself extra health, giving your Nexus extra HP. Um, once again, though, that's probably overkill. I think I think you could run some with pranks like prankster decks. You could run this card. Overgrown Snapvine. When you summon a follower, kill it to summon an Overgrown Snapvine. This card is terrible. Um, the problem with Overgrown Snapvine is that it's a four three. The seven four three. It costs seven, and it's only got four attack and three health. Why would I want to play this over a different card? So like the synergy with Overgrown Snapvine is like, oh hey, I play Maokai, and then I have, and then I play Overgrown Snapvine. Maokai summons a Sapling, and then now that Sapling becomes an Overgrown Snapvine. Um, and then if your opponent doesn't get rid of Overgrown Snapvine, I'm gonna keep playing more Overgrown Snapvines. That's the entire synergy, pretty much. Like any any effect that lets you summon four cards works with Overgrown Snapvine. It's just that he costs seven. So that's the one thing that make that just kills the card. Sapling toss. Summon a sapling. Next round. No, no. Like maybe, but probably no. Terror of the tides. Attack. Oh, this is a sea monster. Ooh, we got a sea monster card. With deep attack. Give enemies minus two, minus zero this round. Sea monster allies have fearsome. Okay, a lot of sea monster allies have fearsome. Well, actually, there's only there's a couple of them that already have fearsome. So that defeats the purpose somewhat. But giving enemies minus two, minus zero. Ooh, you better watch out. Um, that's really good. You still need to highly build around sea monsters to utilize this well. But, oh boy, that is good. The question is, would I use this card? <laughs> uh, I think the answer is maybe as a one-off. But the problem with sea monster cards is that they are very, very expensive. Um, and so you need to run a fine balance between your expensive sea monster cards and all your other cards. If you have too many sea monster cards, your hand is going to get flooded with cards you can't actually And last card, Thorny Toad, last breath, toss two and heal your Nexus two. Great card. Honestly, I don't, I don't care what anybody else says about this card. Amazing card. And yeah, that is all of the cards from set two. Uh, I covered Bilgewater in a previous episode. I have to say, I'm really, really excited for this set. Really, really excited. I mentioned a lot of different deck ideas that I had when going through these. Um, I mentioned more for Bilgewater than I did for some of the other ones. But I think... 
gonna be a really fun um really fun set is going to make it so that there's a lot of viable decks um because it's gonna be like there's gonna be so many people trying out so many different decks and it's very clear like certain decks are going to lose against other decks um so like a deck that might be good like it's Certain decks that might be really, really strong might lose super hard to other decks, and that might make it so that that deck is actually bad. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited for this, and yeah, can't wait for it to be out. Uh, I think it comes. I think it's out tomorrow, actually. Either tomorrow or. Let me see. Um, what was the news on this? When is this coming out? This is launching the 28th, so tomorrow. Um, when I'm recording this tomorrow. But I'm going to have these videos updated this afternoon. Uh, we'll go approximately at 10 a.m., which is going to be 1 o'clock. So, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow when I get on, doing deck building and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs>